My name is David Wiseman. Uh, I'm a captain in the uh, Yorkshire Regiment. I'm from uh, York in, uh, in Yorkshire. I'm currently posted to Catrick Garrison. I'm married to Lucy and I've got uh, two small children. I've got Luke, uh, who's two soon. and I've got a little baby girl called Jessica who was born just before Christmas. My father um, was in the RAF, so I've, all, I've had a history, a family history, if you like, of uh, military interaction. I've always been interested in, in, in the military uh, right from an early age. As soon as I left university, I, 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 I joined the army. For me, personally, um, I wanted to be a soldier. Um, and, and, and for me, soldiering is, is the infantry. Um, and uh, there, was, there was nothing else I wanted to do in the army. I've served in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, in, in 2008 to 2009, I served in Baghdad on Operation Talik 13, uh, and then towards the back end of 2009, um, I, I was uh, um, attached to the 2nd Battalion of the Yorkshire Regiment on Operation Herrick 11 uh, to the Nadi Ali district of Helmand Province, Afghanistan. I was in command of a small team of British soldiers, nine guys, um, who were embedded within the Afghan National Army we were um, undertaking what's called an advance to contact, um, a, a patrol whereby we were, we were hoping to come across the enemy um, and engage them in a firefight. This subsequently happened as predicted um, and during that firefight I was shot in the chest. Um, the round entered high in my, in my shoulder and traveled down through my body, um, through my lung, rattled around my rib cage and it's ended up uh, um, sort of like halfway down my back. The round, the round's still in me. Uh, to, the, to this day. When the round pierced my chest up here high in the shoulder, um, it, it, it passed very close to um, uh, my subclavian artery here and, and, and grazed it, which resulted in uh, blood pouring into my chest. Um, uh, something called a, a hemoneumothorax, basically blood and air was, was coming into this part of the chest um, and, and was affecting my good lung as well. This lung was completely collapsed by the, by the round it, several holes straight through the lung. The lung was uh, not working at all, just collapsed. Um, I had what was called a sucking chest wound, which means that air was being sucked into my chest cavity. Um, and, and the combination of the blood and the air in, in my chest was causing my good lung to collapse as well. I've had a few operations on the, um, on the nerves, which run down through my neck and into my arm to uh, relieve the, uh, uh, the pain and to get a lot more sensation back into my hand, which thankfully to this day is it's pretty good actually. I watched the initial walking with the wounded um, expedition to the North Pole. But watching him do that and, and the rest of the guys really did actually inspire me uh, to go, well, why should I limit my goals? Why should I, uh, as, a, as a wounded guy, why should I go, well, I can't do that, I can't do this. Well, yes, I can. And that's part of our message and that's an important part of the message for me because I know that that it works. I know that it's, it's inspirational because I was inspired. So hopefully, you know, guys watching, watching us climb Everest, who are in, a, you know, wherever they are within their rehabilitation process, hopefully they'll go, hang on a minute, this isn't the end for me. I can still do some pretty cool stuff. And it might not be climbing Everest, and it might not be going to the North Pole. It completely depends on your injuries and your capabilities. You've got to set yourself a realistic goal and smash it. That goal for you might be, I want to drive a car again. I've lost my legs, but I'm going to drive a car again. Fantastic. Set yourself that challenge. It will be difficult. It is a challenge, but it's achievable. Essentially what Walking with Wounded do is we raise money uh, in order to help reskill, retrain and aid in the reintegration of wounded soldiers back into the workplace. Having a job is absolutely essential to giving a guy value, giving a guy purpose and giving a guy direction. And these are things that are massively important to guys who are leaving the armed forces sooner than they would have thought. They never planned for this to happen and they need, you know, they need that direction and that and that, and that purpose in life in order to uh, go on and, and have a successful and a happy life. And I think that's you know, very important work that the charity is doing. <laughs>